All right, be seated and everybody open up your Bibles to Genesis chapter number two and remain seated at this time. God bless you. I love you and greet you with the love of our wonderful Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. That's power in prayer. And, and I know that God, uh, God hears us. Amen. And so we pray in faith. Genesis chapter number two. You ready for a word? Oh, that's, y'all sound weak. You ready for a word? All right, praise God. Genesis chapter number 2 and verse number 18. There is a word from the Lord. Genesis 2 and 18 says, And the Lord God said, It is not good that man should be what? Alone. I will make him a help me for him. Amen. Turn to 1 Corinthians chapter number 7 very quickly. See the rest of what I want to teach you this morning. That's God talking in Genesis 2 and 18. He said, it's not good for man to be alone. He says, I'm going to make him a, a help meet. Now go to 1 Corinthians chapter number 7. 1 Corinthians 7. And look at verse number 7. This is Paul talking this time. Paul says, 1 Corinthians 7 and 7, But I would that all men were even as myself. But every man hath his proper gift of God. One after this manner, and another after that. Of course, Paul was single. And Paul says, I wish that every man had his, uh, was even as myself, having um, this gift of being able to control his passions and his desires uh, towards the opposite sex. But he says, but every man had this proper gift of God, one after this manner, and another after that. Then look at verse number 9 of 1 Corinthians 7. He says, but if they cannot what? Contain, all right, remember what Paul just said in 1 Corinthians 7 and 7. He says, I wish everybody was like me because Paul had that gift of celibacy. He was able to control his passions, all right, and that wasn't an issue for him. Uh, he had things up under control. It wasn't something that overwhelmed him thinking about having his physical or sexual needs met. But he says, that's a gift, and everybody might not have that gift. He comes back in verse number 9 and says, but if they cannot contain, he says, let them do what? Marry, for it is better to marry than to burn. Uh-oh. Look at your neighbor. Say, neighbor, here's the question this morning. Neighbor, are you marriage material? Look at somebody else and ask them. Neighbor, are you marriage material? And look back at him, tell him, we're going to find out in a minute. <laughs> Lord, help us this morning. Please help us. Because some of you over there with Adam, it ain't good for you to be alone. Uh, maybe you ought to be believing God and desiring marriage. But the other, others here this morning that may be on the other side, maybe you over there with Paul. And uh, you single and satisfied. It ain't an issue with you, and you okay being single. You're not uh, overwhelmed by your passions to be with the opposite sex, so you kind of cool. So either it's I'm alone and uh, believe in God for marriage, or either I'm alone and leave me alone. <laughs> I'm single, doing all right, and don't need no help right now. But I want to look at this. Uh, go back to Genesis 2 and 18 very quickly here. And uh, let's, let's deal with this alone issue. What does he mean? Uh, you know, I was praying this week, and God gave me this word. After we finished uh, seed time and harvest, I said, God, where do I go next? God said, relationship. I said, God, it's, it's the, in the middle of holiday season. I usually do relationship in the spring, in the summer. He says, now, now. So I'm obeying God. We're going to talk about relationship for the uh, next couple of weeks. Now, in this verse, again, in Genesis 2 and 18, he says, and the Lord God said, it is not good that man should be what? Alone. He says, I will make him a what? A help me for him. Now listen to it out, uh, out of the Amplified. It says, now the Lord God said, it is not good, sufficient, satisfactory that the man should be alone. I will make him a helper, meet, suitable, adapted, complimentary for him. Not just going to give him somebody. I'm going to give him somebody that's going to compliment him. Uh-oh. Somebody suitable. Don't just want a man. You want one that is complimentary. 
suitable. No, you don't just want a woman. You want somebody that's complimentary, that's suitable, all right? Uh, the person that God desires you to be with. Now, say alone. All right, what does that mean? Adam, in the text, he was really alone. He was the only person on the face of the earth. People always ask me that. Was there other people on the earth before Adam? No, he's the first man. All right, there were animals on the face of the earth, but God says, listen, you don't name the animals, you don't watch the animals, all the animals have companions, they got partners, but you don't have anybody. So he's alone, shout alone. It, it, this word gives the meaning, watch this, that he was existing, but he was not fully living. It was not good, meaning that it was not beneficial. It was not really working out for Adam. He says, all the animals got somebody, but you ain't got nobody. Somebody shout, preach, pastors. You're the only one on the face of this earth, and you ain't got nobody, Adam, and that's not good. Uh, put in your notes Psalm 68 and 6. Psalm 68 and 6. I love this verse because it says that God said of the solidary in families. Shout families. He bringeth out those which are bound with chains, but the rebellious dwell in a dry land. So the Bible says God picks up somebody, and he sets them in a family. Family is important with God. It was never the uh, intended purpose of God that man would just be alone, isolated. By nature, we want to be around other people. Amen. Uh, we want to be a part of a family. We want to be part of a community. Even after the flood, God didn't just start over with Noah. He started over with Noah, his wife. Amen. He started with his three sons and their three wives. Eight people, a family. Say family. When God made the covenant promise to Abraham, it wasn't just to Abraham, it was uh, to Abraham and his seed. He says, through you, all of the families of the earth are going to be blessed. If you wanted the covenantial blessing, you had to be part of Abraham's family. Shout family. Then when we get saved, watch this, we become part or we join the family of God. That's why Romans 8 says that he, he has adopted us in his family. We are joint heirs with Christ. Amen. We are adopted sons and daughters of God. So when you get saved, you're part of a family. All right? Even here this morning, we represent a family, the OBC family. Shout family. Family is a big thing to God. That's why he's telling Adam, it's not good for you to be alone. You don't have a wife. You don't have Eve. And so we can't procreate a family. You all by yourself. No family. Watch this. Man was made in the image of God. That image is family. Even in the one God, who is one in essence, but there's still Father, Son, and Holy Ghost in the one God. So the very image of God carries with it this idea of family and community. All right, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, all of the same substance, but they represent family. Say family. Again, Adam did not have a family. He had pets, he had animals, he had the perfect environment, he had good health, but he had no family. And God says, without a family, this is not good. You're doing a good job, you're doing what I told you to do, you're naming the animals, you're doing all that, but I'm, I'm worried about you, Adam, because you're all by yourself and you don't have a family. So what, guess what he does? He reaches inside of him and he takes from his rib and makes him a wife, a woman. And we call her Eve, shout Eve. Eve. Now, it's very interesting in Genesis 2 when the Bible says he made the woman, say made. Eve. You look that word up in the Hebrew, guess what it actually means? He built a woman. God says, I built a woman. I, I, see, what is he saying? Families, listen, you, you, you don't just come together and all of a sudden just on your own, you know, uh, without any work, without any prayer, with, 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 without any desire. You don't just come together and click together automatically. Listen, family is something that you have to work to build. Mm. Family is something you basically get out of it what you're putting in it. And there's a lot of people saying, my marriage is not this, and, and my family is not this. L let me ask you a question. How much are you putting in it? How much time do you spend together? Can I talk to somebody here? How, what's your plan? What are you trying to do to make the, make the family better, make the marriage better? He built Adam a wife. Say amen if you receive that. Now, the reason why I'm pushing this whole idea of family is because right now, all over this nation, they're arguing the issue of same-sex marriage. Let me preach this. God